let's look at glycolysis. We've already got the big picture. So now we want to have some sense of like, okay, we took glucose and we turned it into pyruvate. Like what, why, what's the point of this? And what did we get out of it? The first thing that I want to make a note of is that this pyruvate has three carbons. This is relevant because that should tell you if pyruvate has three carbons, what happened to the other three carbons from the glucose molecule? You got a couple of options. We could have gotten rid of those carbon atoms. They certainly didn't disappear, we know that. And in fact, we didn't get rid of them, they didn't disappear. We could have breathed them off in carbon dioxide, but that doesn't happen during glycolysis. And in fact, one glucose molecule becomes two pyruvate molecules. So every time you say what happens with pyruvate, you have to know, are you talking about one pyruvate or are you talking about two pyruvates? Because two pyruvates enter this whole process. As I give you numbers of things that come out of this, for example, the process of glucose, turning glucose into two pyruvates that has, I don't know, let's see, 10 enzymes involved, which means there's at least 10 chemical reactions taking place, 10 places where molecules bind, starting with glucose, a molecule binds to an enzyme and gets changed and then binds to a different enzyme and gets changed. And through that whole process, we do get ATP. Some of the energy in the glucose molecules is captured and stored in ATP. Oops, I wanna use orange. And it actually is two ATP molecules. I'm gonna push, I'm not pushing pause, I'm pushing brain pause to show you this chart that I've created that is one place where you can summarize all the stuff you gotta keep track of in all four of the stages of cellular respiration that we're looking at. And now we know that we can actually fill in under the glycolysis column that we get two ATP molecules out of this process. The other thing that we are going to keep track of, and this is glorious, is that we're gonna end up with two electron cars. Two of those puppies. And I'm gonna start right now and show you where are they headed. They're gonna like take a road to the electron transport chain. Two of those guys, and we will see they're rich. We like them. We, the more of those things we create, the more ATP we're going to get. So that's it. We don't get any water out of this. We don't get any carbon dioxide, which if you had to guess, could you have figured that out? Because we had six carbons going in in glucose and six carbons coming out because we get two pyruvate molecules. This whole thing, glycolysis, takes place in the cytoplasm. And it's probably a good idea for me to make note that the process of cellular respiration that I am describing is what happens in a eukaryotic cell. So any cell that has a mitochondrion is the cell that we're describing here. These processes, cellular respiration does happen in prokaryotes who don't have mitochondria, but the locations are different with prokaryotes. I still find it helpful to choose one and focus in on it. So we're gonna choose the eukaryote. We're gonna focus in on where things happen in a eukaryote. But worth putting it in your brain that this is eukaryotes only there are some adjustments to the prokaryote giddy up for how they pull this off. I think that's everything that I wanna tell you about glycolysis. I'm gonna do the modification of pyruvate and the citric acid cycle together in the next section. I'm not done, because what did I just remember 
that we need to do. We need to complete our chart knowing that from glycolysis, we got two high energy electron carriers. We got some cars from glycolysis, yes. Okay, let's go see how many cars and cool things we get out of pyruvate modification and citric acid cycle. 